What's up, I'm Vin, and today I wanna to take a look at some questions involving rational exponents. So here are some notes that we're gonna need, and let's get started. So for the first seven questions, we're just gonna evaluate the expressions. And what we have first is 16 to the 1 fourth. And on top, we have the power, and on the bottom, we have the root. So what I like to do, if I'm doing this without a calculator, is I'm gonna write this in radical form. We have the fourth root of 16 to the first power, or just 16. So this is gonna be fourth root of 16 like this. So now we just have to think what number times itself four times is going to give us 16, and that's going to be 2. And if we wanted to verify this, we could just say on the side here that 2 to the fourth power is 16. So that's why our answer definitely checks out. Now for this one here, what we could do is we could rewrite this as negative 1 times, and then we have 8 to the 1 third. It's important to note that when we convert this, we could write negative 1 times the cube root of 8 to the first power, or just 8 that the negative one is gonna stay on the outside. Because if we had this instead, negative eight to the one third, this we could say is the cube root of negative eight like this. However, because the negative was not included in parentheses like this, we're gonna just treat this as negative one times. But either way, we would get negative one times the cube root of eight is two, and negative one times two is negative two. So in this situation, it wouldn't have mattered, but this is a small detail that can affect other questions. So moving on, but before we move on, I'll just circle our answer to the last question. And now here, what we have is we have the power. So just remember the phrase power over root, because that's what's going to help you convert this. So we have the fifth root of 32, and then that quantity we're going to raise to the second power. So the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2, and then 2 is what we're going to raise to the second power. And this is going to be equal to 4. So for the fourth question here, I want to remember this rule. We have a to the negative b power. And this is the same thing as 1 over a in parentheses to the b power, which in this case I could just write as 1 over a to the b like this. But what this tells me is that anytime I have a negative exponent, that I could get rid of the negative exponent if I take the reciprocal or if I flip the base. So I want to use that idea for this question. And we're going to rewrite this as 9 over 4. And that's going to allow us to change the exponent to a positive 1 half. And now we convert this, 9 over 4 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 9 over 4. And now we could use properties of radicals here and call this the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 4. And the square root of 9 is 3 over the square root of 4 is 2. So here's our solution to question 4. For question 5, we're going to use power over root. So I'm going to rewrite this as 16 over 81 inside the fourth root. And we're taking that entire quantity and raising it to the third power. Now, this throws students off sometimes. They say, wait, don't we have to write it like this? But just know that if we were to write the question like this with the power 3 on the inside, this is going to give us the same solution as this. But the advantage is that when we write it this way, we're able to simplify the expression without using a calculator. And what we have here is the fourth root of the numerator is going to give us 2 over the fourth root of 81 is going to give us 3. And this quantity we're going to raise to the third power. If we did 16 to the third and 81 to the third, that's going to be a giant number on the inside. And that's hard to do without a calculator. So now we have 2 to the third power, and that's going to give us, and we'll just write it out, 2 to the third over 3 to the third. And now we simplify, we're going to get 8 over 27. So here's our solution to 5. So question 6, we're going to take the reciprocal of the base, call this 1 over 27, and this is going to be raised now to the positive 4 thirds. So what we have here is this is going to be 1 to the 4 thirds on top divided by 27 to the 4 thirds on bottom. And 1 to any power is just 1. And on bottom, we're going to have the cube root of 27. And this quantity is going to be raised to the 4th power. So this is going to be 1 over the cube root of 27 is 3. To the 4th power is going to give us 1 over 81. So here is our answer to question 6. Question 7, I would want to rewrite the inside here as 6. And notice that our power of 6 is 1 and our root is 5. So we could rewrite this as 6 to the 1 over 5. And now this quantity is being raised to the negative 10. And now we need to know this law of exponents. When we have a to the b raised to the c, this is going to make a to the b times c. So now we just multiply this exponent and this exponent. And if we do 1 fifth times negative 10, that's going to give us negative 2. And now this, if we simplify, is going to be 1 over 6 to the second power. So we're going to simplify this as 1 over 36. So here's our solution to 7. Questions 8 through 12, we're going to simplify the expressions. We want no negative exponents in our answer. And we're going to assume that each letter represents a positive number. So first up, we're multiplying these two exponent terms. And we need to know this rule. a to the b times a to the c is a to the b plus c. 
So here, when we multiply these x's, we're going to add those exponents together, and 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4 is 8 over 4. Be careful, don't say 8 over 8. Uh, don't make the mistake of adding the denominators. We're just going to add the numerators, and we keep the common denominators the same. And now 8 divided by 4 is 2, so our solution is going to be x squared. Question 9, we're going to use this rule. When we have a product raised to a power, we could raise each term in the product to that same power. So here, we're going to rewrite this as 8 to the negative 2 thirds times, and then we're going to have x to the third to the negative 2 thirds. So here, what we could do is we could rewrite the first term as 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds power. So we're just going to get rid of that negative exponent. And here, first, what we're going to do is we're raising a power to a power, so we're going to multiply three times negative two-thirds, and that's going to give us x to the negative second. So now we could simplify this a little bit more. We're going to have one over, and this part is going to simplify to cube root of eight. That's our base, and that's being raised to the second power. And then x to the negative two, we want no negative exponents in our answers, is going to be one over x squared. So now we'll write the next part of this here, so we'll just draw our arrow. This is going to be one over the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the second power is 4. And now we have times 1 over x squared. So as a single fraction, this is going to be 1 over 4x squared. All right, question 10. Things are definitely starting to get a bit wacky here. So what we have first in pink, we have a product raised to the 1 half. So we're going to have 4 to the 1 half, and then we're raising x to the 8 to the 1 half. And then last, we're going to raise y to the negative half to the 1 half power. And then we'll focus on this next part here, which I'll underline in blue. So we're going to have 32 to the negative 1 fifth, and then we're going to have z to the negative 5 fourths. This is being raised to the negative 1 fifth. So now we just have to simplify piece by piece. So what we have first, 4 to the 1 half is equal to 2, because 4 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 4. So we have the 2 root, but say square root, of 4 to the first. That's equal to 2. And then x to the 8 to the half, we just multiply those exponents, and that's going to give us x to the 4. And then here we have negative half times a half. That's going to give us y to the negative fourth. And then next in our product, we have 32 to the negative 1 fifth. So since our final answer shouldn't have negative exponents, I'll just send this down as 32 to the 1 fifth power like this. And then we have z to the negative 5 over 4 times negative 1 over 5. When we multiply these two, we're going to get a positive 1 over 4. I just see here that when we do 5 over 4 times 1 over 5, you see how the 5 over 5 just cancels, giving you 1 fourth. And we have a negative times a negative is positive. So up top here, we're going to have z to the positive 1 fourth power like this. But once again, we want our final answer to have all positive exponents. So we could write this. We have 2x to the fourth. The y to the negative fourth, I'm going to send down as y to the positive fourth. And then this piece here, we have the fifth root of 32 to the first power. And then we have finally z to the 1 fourth left like this. So now we just simplify. This is 2x to the fourth, z to the 1 fourth, over, and then we have y to the fourth, times the fifth root of 32 is going to give us 2. And now notice 2 over 2 cancels. So there's a few ways we could write our answer. We could just say x to the fourth times z to the 1 fourth divided by y to the 1 fourth like this. Or if we want, we could write our final answer in radical form. We could say something like, we could write our answer as x to the fourth times the fourth root of z. And we'll just make that a little bit neater. We have the fourth root of z over the fourth root of y. So question 11, we could start by flipping the inside, and that'll make the exponent on the outside positive. So what we're going to have on the inside now is we're going to have x to the second times y to the 9 over 2. And then we're dividing by, we're going to have 4x to the third y to the fourth. So the numerator is going down to the denominator and vice versa. The denominator is going up. And this whole quantity now is being raised to the positive two. So now just raise each of these terms in the quotient to the power two. So we're going to have x to the second to the second, and we would just multiply here. x to the two raised to the two is x to the four. And now when we have this part here, we're going to have y to the nine over two. And if we just did that on the side, y to the nine over two raised to the 2, we multiply these exponents, and we're going to get y to the ninth like this. So we'd have y to the ninth on top. Over, on bottom, we're going to have 4 to the second power. And then we're going to have x to the third raised to the second is going to give us x to the sixth. And we're going to have y to the fourth raised to the second is going to give us y to the eighth. And now this, we could just simplify. This is x to the 4, y to the 9, over 16x to the sixth, 
y to the 8. And now what we could use next is the law of exponents when we divide exponents that have the same base. When you have a to the b over a to the c, that's going to make a to the b minus c. So we could use this rule, and that's going to give us, we're going to have x to the power 4 minus 6 is x to the negative 2. And then we're going to have y to the 9 minus 8 is y to the first. And that takes care of dividing the x and y terms, but we're also going to have a 16 left in the denominator. But if we write everything with positive exponents, we're going to have y to the first on top over 16, and x to the negative 2 we could, sound, we could send down as x to the second power. And here's our solution to 11. So question 12 is definitely a bit insane. We're going to start by raising the stuff in parentheses here to the 3 halves. So we're going to have 9 to the 3 over 2, and then we're going to have x to the 3 over 2, and then y to the 3 over 2. And we're dividing by, we're going to have 27 to the 2 thirds power, and then we're going to have x to the third raised to the 2 thirds, and then we're going to have y to the negative 4 raised to the 2 thirds. And now we shift to the second set of parentheses here. This, we have a negative 1 exponent on the outside. So if we want to get rid of the negative, we just flip the inside. So we could rewrite this as 4y to the 1 third. And then we're going to have 3x to the negative 2. And now we have an exponent of 1 on the outside. So we can move to the next stage here. And this I would simplify. 9 to the 3 halves, remember, this is our power. So we have a power over a root like this. And I'm just going to abbreviate power. So we're going to do the square root of 9 is 3. And then 3 to the third power is 27. So we have 27 here. We have x to the 3 halves. We have y to the 3 halves. And now on bottom, we have 27 to the 2 thirds. The cube root of 27 we're doing first. The cube root of 27 is 3. And 3 to the second power is 9. And now we're going to raise x to the third to the 2 thirds. When we multiply 3 times 2 thirds, that's going to give us x to the second power. And then last here, we have y to the negative 4 times 2 thirds, because we're raising this to the 2 thirds. So we multiply. And that's going to give us y to the negative 8 thirds. And then in this second fraction here, we could just drop the parentheses because we're raising this to the first. So we're just going to have 4 times y to the 1 third. And in the denominator, we have 3x to the negative 2. So now we could go ahead and start combining stuff. So let's see what's going to combine here. And I already see that when we multiply these fractions together. One thing I would do maybe beforehand is simplify. 27 divided by 9 is going to give us 3. And notice we have 3 divided by 3 here is going to cancel out completely. So these numbers just wipe out pretty nicely. And then I look for anything else that could cancel, or maybe I want to send the negative stuff up first. So what I also spot right away is I see that x to the second times x to the negative 2, those will combine nicely. So we have x to the second times x to the negative 2. When we add these exponents, it's going to give us x to the 0, which is going to be equal to 1, because we assume that our variables represent positive numbers. So I could see here that x to the second times x to the negative 2 is just going to equal 1. So we're already starting to cancel out some stuff. So now what I would do from here is just write some of the leftovers. Up top, we have 4 x to the 3 halves power. And then we're going to have y to the 3 halves times y to the 1 third. And if we add those fractions, because remember, when you multiply common bases, add the exponents, we have 3 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And if we simplify this, this I would multiply by 3 over 3 to get 9 over 6 plus, and this one I would multiply by 2 over 2, and that would give us 2 over 6. Okay, so I'm just making common denominators here so that now when we add these, we're going to get 11 over 6. So in the next line here, y to the 3 over 2 times y to the 1 over 3 is going to give us y to the 11 over 6. And now let's see what we have in the denominator here. All we're left with after everything canceled out is y to the negative 8 thirds. So what, what I could even do with this step is I could send this back up. I'm going to send this term up. So I'll just write an invisible 1 down here. And I'm going to send the y to the negative 8 thirds up as y to the positive 8 thirds. And now what I would do from here is we have to add those two fractions in the last line when we start to simplify. So I would just see here on the side, what is 11 over 6 plus 8 over 3? And if I multiply the top and bottom by 2, that's going to give us 16 over 6. And then 11 plus 16 is 27. So our next line, we're going to have 4x to the 3 halves. 
and we're going to have y to the power 27 over 6. Now this, I would simplify a little bit. This is 4x to the 3 halves. And then if we divide the top and bottom by 3, that's going to give us 9 over 2. So our final answer here, we could leave like this. Just know it is an option. We could write our answer as 4 times the square root of x cubed times the square root of y to the ninth. And then this in radical form would be 4 times the square root of x to the third y to the ninth. So last four questions, we're going to simplify. We're going to write our answers in rational exponent form. And we're going to have no negative exponents, assuming each letter represents positive numbers. So first up here, we have fourth root of x to the sixth. So we're going to have x to the power 6 over the root is 4. And if we divide the top and bottom by 2, we're going to have x to the 3 halves. So here is our solution to 13. Question 14, we could rewrite this as a rational exponent first. We have 5 times x to the 1 third power because we have an invisible power of 1. And then next, we would have 2 times x. The invisible power is 1, so this would be x to the 1 fourth. And now we multiply the numbers. 5 times 2 is 10. And then when we multiply these x's, we have to add 1 third and 1 fourth. So we have to be skilled at adding fractions. We're going to have 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12 after we do times 4 times 4 and then times 3 times 3. And this works out to 7 twelfths. So we're going to have 10x to the 7 twelfths power. Question 15, I would break this up into a bunch of pieces. This is the fifth root of x to the third times the fifth root of y squared. And then we would have times the tenth root of x to the four times the tenth root of y to the 16th power. And now I would write each of these as rational exponents. So we'd have x to the three fifths, and then we'd have y to the two fifths times we have x to the four over 10. We're just doing power over root straight across and then y to the 16 over 10. And then from here, I would reduce all these fractions. So the first two fractions are reduced. We'd have x to the 3 over 5, y to the 2 over 5. But then we're going we're gonna to have x to the power 4 over 10, if we divide top and bottom by 2, reduces to 2 fifths. And then we'd have y divide the top and bottom by 2 to the 8 over 5. And now this we could simplify. We're going to multiply these two together. And we're going to have x to the power 3 over 5 plus 2 over 5 is going to give us x to the 5 over 5. And then we would have y. So up next, and maybe we'll switch colors for this. So we're going to have y to the power. We're multiplying these two y terms. 2 over 5 plus 8 over 5 is going to give us 10 over 5. So our final answer, all simplified here, this is going to work out to x to the first, y to the second power. So question 16 is our final question, and it's a little bit tricky, but what I would do here is I would start from the inside out. So I'd rewrite the inside as y times, we're going to have y to the 1 half power like this. And now what we have is we could call this y to the first, and when we multiply common exponents, same base, we're going to add the exponents together. So you have 1 plus a half is 1 and a half, which we could call 3 over 2. But now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put this in parentheses to the first power. And now we could use the power over root definition to rewrite this as y to the 3 halves raised to the power 1 over the root 3. So we're using the power over root definition here. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply those exponents together. So we're doing 3 over 2 times 1 third. And when they cancel, this is going to be equal to y to the 1 half power. So this is our final answer.